Now, I wanted to get Max Kaiser on. We were able to get him. We're going to break here in a few minutes because he's been warning for about three years of a world bond meltdown. He predicted it would happen by last winter. There were some jitters then, but it didn't happen. It's bold to set a date, but he's had a lot of predictions come true. It certainly is the biggest bubble ever. Well, now a $140 billion bond fund is going to cash as it braces for bond market collapse. We'll tell you who's saying that. We've got a lot of other analysts saying it. Turmoil coming to the markets. Prepare for bear markets and bonds. Ron Paul. Warren Buffett's basically saying the same thing. Europe is having a move towards bank runs. They're wanting to restrict cash and have bail-ins. I mean, something this way wicked comes. Max Kaiser, where are we right now? Hey, Alex Jones. It is a pleasure to be back with you. Now, let's talk about the bond apocalypse. As you mentioned, I it was a bit early in my call. I was looking for this last year. Uh, you know, this has been something people have been talking about for a number of years because the way to get out of all of the financial problems over the past 20 years has always been to, quote, extend and pretend, which means wrap it all up in a fresh bond and offer it again, but with a lower interest rate and with a longer maturity date. And this has been going on for many years, but now we're at the end game. Uh, the globe now has $200 trillion of debt. And keep in mind that the total GDP of the world is roughly $60 trillion. But so I thought derivatives were over $2 quadrillion. Well, the GDP versus the um, debt, the actual debt on the books, not derivatives. We're yeah, but the real debt is $200 trillion, yeah. $200 trillion in actual debt, not in the shadow banking system with the derivatives and all the stuff that they don't count, but the actual debt that people count. The uh, national debt, corporate debt, all this debt, mortgage debt, $200 trillion worth of debt. There's a huge amount of debt. And as a lot of pundits are now saying, we're at the point where you simply can't add any more debt. All right, stay this. there. It's really important information, MaxKaiser.com. Thank you for joining us, Max Kaiser. We're going to look at this. I mean, look, he said we were going to have the baby when it was 10 months pregnant, the woman. Now it's like 14, 15 months pregnant. Max says it looks like it's going to pop. Maybe he's wrong. Maybe the gestation period's now, you know, 50 years. Coming up with Max Kaiser, hit some of the other headlines that are at InfoWars.com. Max Kaiser, inventor of virtual trading technology used widely around the world, successful stockbroker, author, TV host uh, with uh, Al Jazeera, BBC, RT, you name it. Uh, Max, go ahead. Uh, you got interrupted by the break. You were getting into what's happening with the technicals, what's going on worldwide and the preparation for collapse we see, uh, please continue. Yeah, imagine you're trying to sell a kilo of cocaine, okay? Now, what you do, you, we know from watching movies like um, uh, about drug, drug dealers that they cut the cocaine with some, something like, you know, whatever, baby, baby laxative or whatever they put in there to make the uh, kilo appear like five kilos or 10 kilos. Now, what's happened in the bond market is that 20 years ago, you had a certain amount of AAA-rated sovereign government debt, the good stuff, pure government AAA-rated bonds. But for 20 years now, they keep adding junk bonds to the mix. They put the junk bonds in our pension funds. They put the junk bonds in our corporations. They put the junk bonds in our municipalities. So when you cut, any drug dealer knows if you cut, 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 eventually you end up, with nothing, you can't sell it, it's garbage. And that's where the bond market is today. It's been cut so many times with junk bonds and garbage and false accounting and uh, misallocation that now the global bond market is completely polluted. There's nothing that nobody wants on these sovereign bonds anymore. To give you an idea how bad the situation is, the U.S. 10-year Treasury bond hasn't traded the yield, hasn't been this low for 240 years. That's right. The entire history of America, there's never been a period where the bonds have been so hated. What about the United Kingdom? Well, in the 300 years since the Bank of England, similar situation. They've never had the yields at these low levels because nobody wants this paper anymore, no matter how much they force them to buy it. And, and what we're seeing, in my view, Alex, is that the social unrest 
the violence in America and around the world is the result of a financial dislocation and a financial problem. So when people say, well, when's the big collapse coming? The answer is that it's happening right now. That's what all this violence is about. It's about towns and municipalities and societies uh, falling apart. They can't pay their bills anymore. The sewage is being turned off. The basic services are being turned off. Here in London, they're firing firemen, policemen, teachers. They're being forced out of London because they've run out of money. Uh, now, the bond dealers, the people who create those bonds, the $200 trillion worth of debt, to hide the fact that society is breaking apart, they get a fee, and they are fabulously wealthy. You mentioned Warren Buffett. He's a good example. He's in the business of selling the bonds. He's in the business of expanding the debt. So he gets wealthy. But everyone else is falling apart, and we see this incredible rise of violence. In my view, it's beyond the race question. The race question is a smokescreen. The real truth is that you've got a cadre of bankers on Wall Street in the city of London here in London who have destroyed the economy, and people don't know where to turn. They become violent, and the race motivation is a smokescreen for class war between bankers and everybody else. And, and so, and we see it now in the bond markets falling apart. So the, and what does that mean to the average person? It means that interest rates, which are the inverse of a bond price, start to go up. So your mortgage suddenly goes up five or six. And we know real interest rates are starting to creep up, but the elite yeah. still give themselves zero percent interest so they can consolidate power at a real detriment to the real economy. But they don't seem to care and then put out false economic numbers telling us everything's peachy keen. How long can this go on? Well, we, we've seen a couple of examples of <clears throat> different scenarios. So in Iceland, they said no to the bankers. They let their currency collapse, and they've restarted their economy, and now they're the fastest-growing economy in Europe. In Greece, they are going to do a deal with the European Central Bank and the IMF to do this extend and pretend. They're going to load them up with more debt anyway. And they're going to be, continue being a vassal state to Germany and the ECB and the IMF. So they're going to use the debt slavery in Greece. That's what it looks like. Greece was, 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 looks like they're going to fail in standing up to the slave masters at the IMF. Uh, they are not going to do in Iceland. So they will continue being a slave. So the, the European Central Bank essentially absorbs all of Greece's debt. They'll take on another... You know, four or five hundred billion. Stay there and explain it to us. Long segment coming up. And I agree with you. The collapse has been incremental for a while. It's going quicker now. Will there be some big events like Ron Paul's talking about? Max Kaiser's our guest. I'm Alex Jones. Stay with us. I don't take the interpretation of quack scientists saying life just spontaneously began. And it's the same thing when I use terms like a new age. I don't mean that in the new agey sense. I mean... We're coming to an end like Iron Age, Bronze Age, you know, Stone Age, we're uh, Industrial Age, Computer Age. We're coming to the end of an age. All these mega bubbles, all the corruption, government gearing up with corporations to suppress people during the crisis, Ministry of Defense, Pentagon reports, it's all admitted to a learned person. Liberal just means well-learned in the ancient text, I'm a super liberal in that I'm into information, I'm into how things work, I don't claim to be the smartest guy around, but when the globalists have written thousands of books and publications telling us exactly what they're gonna do, I can get up here and tell you what's coming and then it happens. It doesn't mean it happens exactly how we said or when, but in the general sense, we're, we're dead on in that dead reckoning spectrum. Some people act like Max Kaiser and myself or Ron Paul are trying to implode things. No. If a woman's nine months pregnant and her water's broke, you can say, hey, I bet she goes into labor the next few days. It ain't rocket science. You looked at Zimbabwe 15 years ago when they started hyper-accelerating their printing presses. They had a boom at first. Every economist said that's going to cause hyperinflation and total implosion. It's a failed state now. Same thing with Weimar Germany. Same thing with Mexico, devaluing their currency. Argentina, I mean, the laws are not suspended. They've just figured out ways to prop it up. And I'll give the analogy of my best friend growing up who went to the hospital over a cut toe, I think it was, 
He got an infection, got into his uh, guts, got into his bloodstream, killed him. And I was there at the hospital, had to go off the radio. They said he's taking a turn for the worse. I, I, I went off the radio. I went over there. And they were waiting for his dad to get here from Dallas, driving like 90 miles an hour. And the nurses said, look, he's, he's, he's going to die. If we don't keep giving him adrenaline, he's going to die. And they said, we think we can give him adrenaline one more time. Might keep him alive for about an hour. And he was on a respirator, but he was conscious looking at me. And I went in there. The first they wanted me to get him to fight and everything. And he was, you know, going, you know trying to fight, but he couldn't talk with the thing down his throat. You could see him in his eyes looking at me and tears come out of his eyes. But, man, I was there right before his dad got there. They gave him that last thing of adrenaline. It jacked him up for a while, and then his eyes went glazed. They looked at him, and they said, he's dead. They took him off the respirator that night. I remember sitting in there. He was peacefully dead. This country and this world economy is dead already. It's on a respirator of QE Unlimited. And all I know is the elites are building bunkers and running to the hills. I told you that first. It's in the news now. And I talked to big wigs this week. A lot of them, not just the two I talked to over the weekend. Now I've talked to more. And there is a hysteria in the elite. And you're seeing it in the news now. Now, I hope the bubble doesn't pop now. This is going to be so painful, but it can't go on forever. I had uh, Schiff on yesterday, and he said, no, we need to pop it before it gets bigger. It's more dangerous. Max Kaiser, you've got the floor for the next 12, 14 minutes or so. You were going over, you know, they keep cutting the cocaine. They keep cutting the bonds down to where it's nothing but talcum powder now. People are realizing that folks keep buying U.S. bonds because they know if it goes under, everything goes under. But at some point, it's like a snake eating itself. I mean, it's craziness. And then the general yuppie public just thinks everything's wonderful because, you know, they can watch Caitlyn Jenner or whatever his name is. I mean, I'm not against Caitlyn Jenner. I just don't care. I mean, it's mental illness that we promote all this stuff that doesn't matter at the end of the day and Confederate battle flag fights and just, we're fighting over who polished the silverware the best on the deck of the Titanic's what I'm getting at. And I look at this economy like my friend, dead already. Or it's kind of like use the Wrath of Khan analogy of Spock goes in to fix the reactor and he want, Kirk wants to go in to save him and they grab him and they say, look, you know, he'll die if I don't get him out. They go, look, he's dead already. I don't know how long till Spock hits the ground, but... I mean, he's leaning over right now. His skin's burned off. I mean, uh, and then the, and people are sitting there to us. It's not bad. It's not bad. You're a liar. You're a fear monger. And we're just looking at weapons moving in with NATO to have war with Russia. Our government's so crazy. They fund Al-Qaeda to murder every Christian they find. I mean, we got really evil people in charge. And, and, and every instinct I've got is just get off the air, get out of here. Roll over to the globalists and just run with my family. But I'm not going to do that. Max, and I, I'm 100% saying what I believe, what I see happening. How long can this go on? What is the state of the world? What will the accelerated meltdown look like? Well, first of all, I have to ask, there are people who confuse you with a new age, incense, burning, uh, Bernstock, sandal-wearing, yoga, uh, Vedic master? I'm, I'm shocked. Alex <laughs> Jones of Austin, Texas, worshiping crystals? No, no, no. What I'm getting at is, I say we're coming to the end of an age. Clearly, clearly, yeah, the end so of an I age is here. I get it. I get it. So listen. No, but I'm asking you: Are we not at the, the end US of an age? You know, like like they they have to fund themselves. And they sell bonds, right? And uh, what's happened is that be, uh, they have starting to buy their own bonds because nobody nobody else nobody else wants to buy them out there. So they're buying their own bonds because if they stop buying their own bonds then the bond markets collapse and interest rates go high and everything falls apart like it did in 2008. So in 2008, everything came to a dead stop and suddenly they printed $60 trillion. The debt of the globe went from $140 trillion to $200 trillion. They printed $60 trillion to essentially buy back their own mistakes. Uh, the theory is, why do they do this? Well, the theory is that we're going to fake it till we make it. You know, we're going to keep interest rates low, and this is going to get people to start businesses, and wages are going to go higher, and taxes are going to go up, and once we get those taxes, we're going to pay down this debt. Well, it hasn't happened in seven years. There hasn't been enough tax revenue to pay down the debt. Therefore, the debt keeps on going higher and higher. And at some point, you just have uh, a capitulation where there's nobody left. There's no greater fool left 
there's no more room to buy, to eat your own vomit, essentially, is what the central bank is doing. And, and you have a repeat of 2008. But it just is much worse because there was never any reform. Barack Obama, in my opinion, the greatest failure of his presidency is that when he took office, he bailed out the bankers instead of bailing out Main Street. He could have very easily bailed out Main Street. He could have bailed out the mortgage holders, not the mortgage underwriters. And this whole crisis could have been averted after maybe two and a half years of a gut-wrenching adjustment. We would now be expanding. People would be a lot more hopeful. And we wouldn't see this race, uh, you know, violence erupt because people would be too busy making hand over fist money and the United States would be a world leader. Instead, he bailed out the bankers. He left Main Street to rot. So you have municipalities, infrastructure, potholes, bridges just crumbling. There's and no that's because they're greedy up. and want it to implode so they can buy it up for pennies on the dollar. But only a suicide banker, the term you coined, would do that because the conflagration is so incredibly dangerous. There's so many suicide bankers now. There's another, like, every week... Uh, there's another banker because they feel so ashamed of being in that industry and participating in financial terrorism that either they just outright kill themselves out of embarrassment to be associated with the likes of Jamie Dimon or Lloyd Blankfein, or they just blow themselves up because, you know, they, they've lost their mind. But when you give guys unlimited credit at 0% interest, and every time they make a mistake, the government bails them out, you know, you're encouraging psychosis. On a mass scale. Well, I disagree with you. I think most of these hundreds of bankers dying a year are being murdered. Well, uh, you know, in, in the case of J.P. Morgan, you know, when you work for them, and I worked on Wall Street for many years, you know, when you do a life insurance contract, it's in the name of the firm, it's not in the name of your family. So if you're dead, the firm gets the death benefit, not your family. Well, aren't these guys the biggest gangsters ever? You told the story, was it J.P. Morgan calling up? Or, or was it Goldman Sachs? Oh, said, Corzine, and said, listen, you give us our billion dollars or we're going to kill you. And uh, I, I, my understanding is that he threatened to kill John Corzine during the MF Global scandal. They got paid the billion dollars ahead of any other creditor, which went, totally broke the law. That's a completely uh, unlawful act of security. Well, listen, violation. you've been there. I've been there at the highest levels of some major business and also Hollywood. When you get in these rooms with these guys, they are beyond gangsters out of movies. And they really do. I mean, that's who they are. The public is so naive. Well, the public doesn't have any sense that there are victims to these financial crimes. But I, in my view, the way society is breaking apart in America is because the economy is breaking apart in America. So it, it, I don't make, it doesn't make sense to say, well, when is the big bond bubble going to collapse? Because by then, if you're not prepared, it'll be too late. And during this interim period, all of these portions of society are breaking down anyway. So this is, this is happening right now. It's happening in real time. It, it's, it's here. Uh, so it's not about the absolute moment when you suddenly have a bond apocalypse and there's another 2008-like scenario. If you're not completely prepared at that point, you know, you will, it'll be too late. But you should know that you're already experiencing a degradation in your society, in your country, because of the massive quantities of wealth that have been stolen by the folks that we've been talking about. Sure. For well, well except for a few chosen cities, a few chosen areas, like Austin, Texas, uh, like some areas of Orange County, you drive around the country, I've been all over it, it looks like a bombed out third world war zone. Uh, compared to what it looked like decades ago when I went on road trips across this nation. I mean, this country... Well, what happens is it becomes generational. So now you've got the whole generation, people that are just now 20, 21, 22, who have, don't know anything different. So they grew up without their expectations are that America is a second world country, that America is a third world country. They never, they have no memory of America from even the 1980s. And when I started working on Wall Street... In the 1980s, Amer the wages in America were still relatively quite high. You could have a single-family breadwinner. You could have people going to school without incurring huge amounts of debt. You could get a decent... I walked on onto a brokerage firm in 1983, got a job on the spot, and became very, very successful pretty quickly without any training in that field whatsoever because the opportunities were there. There were many firms on Wall Street 
Now they've all been either gone bankrupt or been taken over. Now you only have two or three firms on Wall Street. There's, I mean, Merrill Lynch has now been taken over. Yeah, I was talking to a well-known uh, former owner of a large brokerage company that managed billions, and he just said, you know, about six months before 2008, he sold it all, got out, and he said because the writing was already on the wall that the regulators would shut you down even if you followed all the rules because they were run by the big three brokerage houses that were consolidating, and right. it's a and mafia. It's huge barriers to entry, and it's all crony capitalism. So, you know, when I was working on Wall Street in the early 80s, there was stories of shoeshine boys who, who be, got their broker's license and became incredibly successful. You never hear about stories like that anymore because all those avenues toward progress have been completely shut down now. It's now a closed shop. It's the way it was back in the 50s and 60s where it was the old boys and it was all very controlled. And Because that's where the access of the money is. When the Fed prints, a hundred billion dollars, you know, just or a trillion dollars, it, it, it's distributed through the primary dealer system. There's, I think, 18 primary dealers. They're on Wall Street. They're big names that you would be familiar with. They're the ones that get the money first, and then their job is to distribute the money by selling, reselling the bonds and reselling securities. So if you have a job at one of those groups, one of those firms, and there's only a few where you can get in, they're more institutionally oriented, they're not retail oriented, but if you're working inside one of those firms, you're literally given, you know, you walk into the office every day and the government gives you a million bucks. And they say, uh, can you resell this million bucks and keep, you know, keep uh, 50, 60,000 bucks for yourself and we're going to do this every single day for the next five years. That's your job. Just resell what we just gave you and you make $50,000 a day Sure. It takes about an hour. I mean, when I worked on Wall Street, you know, if you work more than two hours a day, you know, you were an idiot. Because at that point, there was it was during that incredible bull market of the 1980s, and this money was pouring in like crazy. Then it's not the same anymore. But in the bond market, though, in the sovereign bond market, the government bond market, the thing that's keeping this Titanic uh, partially afloat is huge. And it's free money. They just give it to these sure. guys. When will the adrenaline reason. stop working? And, and how, how do we kill over? It, 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 you have this, um, like a 2008, nothing changed to stop the problems of 2008. And what happened in 2008 is that banks stopped trusting each other. So they stopped lending to each other. So you have a credit freeze. Credit is no longer moving. So you have essentially everything comes to a halt and money very quickly runs out. The actual cash in the system, there's not really actually any cash. I mean, the cash at the ATM machine, that kind of cash, it's, it's a minuscule compared to the electronic cash. The electronic cash is probably 98, 99% of all cash. None of that becomes available. Only the physical stuff in the ATMs is available. That runs out in three or four days. Now it's gone. And now you're sitting there with no cash no access to cash, and the system is frozen. So then you have a completely different reality. You have people that have been listening to your show that have something to trade for. They've got you know some gold, some silver. Uh, that know, was my next question, with. Max, for the time survive. we have. In, in, in the time we have, what do you make of Texas wanting its gold back from the New York private Fed <laughs> and, and well, the Germans and, and everybody Texas else? Texas is stupid. You know, I mean, the guy uh, who was behind that, a uh, very long-standing Wall Street a stalwart, um, uh, the name escapes me, but he's from a long line Texas family. Uh, the name I'll think of the second we hang up. But you know, he's the one who put that in place. He knows the writings on the wall. These, the, the insiders know that, like the Roadrunner cartoon, when Wile E. Coyote is running off the cliff, there's a few seconds where he's still up there in the air, but, and he's pounding his legs. And you look at him and you say, hey, dude, you know, you've run out of a cliff. You know, you're, you're about to collapse. Uh, that's what the insiders know. We're, we've got that wild E. Coyote moment. So the Texas very wisely have uh, repatriated. So has Austria. So has Russia is buying thousands of tons of gold. Germany is, hasn't. Uh, China. China has been buying gold. Germany already has a lot of gold. The insiders are buying and accumulating the gold. Texas doing a very smart move uh, by by doing. It, it, you know, you, you got to look at that. And if that is not telling you something. You are not, you're not, you're not listening. You're not listening to what's happening. Okay, well, obviously the collapse has already begun in the third world. Millions more are starving every year. Riots all over the planet. It hasn't completely hit here yet, but the water's rising towards our higher islands that are really just mountains, you know, here on the bottom of the sea, sticking up above the surface. 
Is there bigger moments where the collapse accelerates? Well, I mean, you remember 2008. It was not that long ago. The entire world economy had come to a grinding halt. And you had every bank on Wall Street was facing insolvency. And there was panic. And um, they got together and they said, okay, we're all going to work together. Except for Lehman Brothers. Lehman Brothers, because they wouldn't play Tell ball. us about it in the final segment, MaxKaiser.com. Absolutely. What is the next new mega bailout? What is it? Um, remember, the system does not like this show. They really hope you don't take the stories and email them and text them and post them on Facebook and Twitter. Rebel flag controversy. Why not just ban Democratic Party for its link to racism? Very important article. Council of Conservative Citizens adds a race dialogue as race war brews in America, which they want to distract us from the social unrest and make it racial. Google secretly testing self-driving cars in Austin, Texas. Sick new ISIS execution video emerges of prisoners having heads blown off, being drowned in cages and blown up in a car. Google secretly spying on computer users via microphones. U.S. will permanently position heavy weapons on Russian border. You know, what about that? I was getting into the economy and gold and all the things that are happening but what about now NATO saying they're going to have logistics, commandos, fighter bombers directly in Ukraine attacking the Russians? I mean, this, this, and it's not even a big news item. It's just like, oh, we're sick of hearing about Ukraine. Big deal. It, it, it really is mental illness. What are the establishment people thinking, Max Kaiser? Or is this threat of war meant to prop up the financial system somehow? To Ukraine that we know you can't pay back our loans, but we're going to give you the money anyway. And then they turn around and tell Greece that you can't pay back the loans, so we're not going to give you any money. Well, you know, so why is the IMF, Christine Lagarde, why are they dictating global geopolitics? They're not an elected body. Nobody put them in charge. They're just a bank. This is an example of what we're saying, where the bankers take over and they start dictating policy. So they're saying, IMF is saying to Greece, you have to starve. You have to be Germany's debt slave. Then they turn around to Ukraine and say, oh, we love you, Ukraine. We love you. Here's all the money. We know you can't pay it back, but we'll give you another $50 billion. <laughs> So why? What's the double standard there? There's no explanation why you, in Ukraine is a Well, they totally crazy. control Ukraine, and they're giving it's it to Joe Biden's son. I mean, you're going to put money. There's no chance in a zillion you're ever going to see any of that back. At least with Greece, they have some kind of, you know, economy with olives and tourism. It is insane. So, but, I mean, Alex, look, you look, look. Going now. You, were, you were just said a moment ago, uh, you were talking about truck drivers, uh, you know, these uh, Google cars, the auto driving cars. You know that the number one job in 39 states in America is truck driver. So imagine when these self-driving trucks take to the highway. That's the number one job in 39 states in America. That's going to be a huge wave of unemployment on top of the current unemployment. That just means more violence, more unrest, more tension. Uh, why? For what purpose? Who does it serve? Who's writing these, these knucklehead ideas into their policies? Makes no sense. Do five more minutes with us because I forgot to get to the points you wanted to cover. Experimenting with virtual reality financial services enter the matrix. That's a story out of TechCrunch you sent me in. Max Kaiser. Um, I told you. <laughs> J.P. Morgan, uh, a big article about that, says that he is the devil incarnate. Oh, yeah. I said that um, the devil incarnate is uh, Blythe Masters. I made that point. You know, I was up in Belfast. And Blythe Masters is trying to control Bitcoin. And as you know, I'm a big Bitcoin supporter. And now she is in league with some very unscrupulous people. And they're trying to take over Bitcoin. So the battle is on. The fight is on. It's Max Kaiser versus Blythe Masters once again. After we battled in the silver market, now we're battling in the Bitcoin market. She is by far of all the corrupt bankers on Wall Street that have come through there in the last three years. Stay there. I want to come back, and I want to end this main transmission with Emperor She's Palpatine. You can't stop me. Darth Vader will become more powerful than either of us. Finishing up with Max Kaiser, Infowars.com, MaxKaiser.com can follow him on Twitter by going there to that site. Uh, Max, uh, everything's getting more and more gamed. You brought up the driverless cars. 
Time Magazine and others have said, get rid of humans driving, robots are better. Well, how about kill all the humans and say robots are better? It's like this anti-human view of the elite is translating down, but globalism destroys the market, it's consolidating, uh, and then these globalists just think they're going to run off to their armored redoubts and be safe forever. They're crazy. Eugenicism, techno-eugenics. They are re they're creating the master race of robot slaves. So, I mean, getting back to Ukraine for a second, any nine-year-old with an internet connection can see after five minutes that Ukraine is being run by Nazis. And the IMF is mostly owned by America. So America supports Nazis uh, in the Ukraine. Simultaneously, the IMF is saying, well, the, you know, Greece has to restructure in a way that pleases Germany. And, and Germany, by the way, uh, is still, they're filling the sores from the original Nazis. So, you know, the Nazi theme is running quite, quite rampant through the IMF right now. Well, the EU uh, was and, a Nazi project. It, yeah, no kidding. So uh, it, it, the Greeks are understandably upset, uh, but, you know, they, uh, like many people before, when you have an economic uh, collapse, you suddenly you, you lose most of your ability to fight back. That's why in America right now, people still have the ability to fight back against the real, the real oppressors. To vote with their dollars. Their time on the street fighting each other over silly, silly stuff. They really un don't understand what the threat is, and they're not organizing in a way that is going to meaningfully preserve the freedoms that they have come to enjoy. And it's really sad to see that. I can see it clearly because I'm not in the United States, uh, so I get to look at it from a kind of a big picture view. But uh, yeah, I can see that on an interesteen basis, town, town, man, man, woman, woman, they're, they're engaged in these little fights that are going, to, and, and they're sleepwalking into tyranny. I'll, I'll say that. America is sleepwalking into tyranny. Very sad, but it looks irreversible at this point. And the establishment has made the conscious decision to do it. What do you make of TPP and the arrogance that they're about to pass it tomorrow? Well, TPP just gives, he's throw the keys of the castle to a bunch of corporations that are eugenic, eugenicists. Like Who are known Monsanto. to loot every country they get to the ground. Yeah, Mon Monsanto is pure eugenicism, pure eugenics, Monsanto. Uh, they're a huge. The copyright cartel. You know who's really putting up a good fight right now? I'd say that the number one threat to the monopolists right now is Kim.com. Kim.com is putting together a new uh, company called Meganet, and Meganet is going to challenge the Internet by introducing a new Internet that's going to run on the spare capacity of people's uh, smartphones. By the way, Kim invited uh, Leanne out there before he even announced that, and it never happened. I need to get an update from uh, Leanne McAdoo. But maybe. Oh, yeah, well, this is going to be a completely encrypted Internet. He, he, is, he has gone to war with the copyright lobby, and the copyright lobby is very ugly and pernicious out there in Hollywood. And, you know, he's making big strides. He's, he's got some legal victories. He's Just be, say what they are. Hollywood is run by the Italian and Jewish mafia. <laughs> it's run by the copyright cartel, who believes that they have perpetual ownership of ideas. And that uh, if you, if we've talked about this before, once they have perpetual ownership on all ideas, if you so much as put a word like Disney in an email, you're going to get a bill. Oh, yeah, they're Disney openly saying that. Bank. Exactly. Yeah. And, then, and then this panopticonic surveillance grid everybody loves is meant to tax and track you at every level. And again, you just got a bunch of mafias, oh, Dixie that. mafias, everything is running wild. It's all digital, so it's all easy to track. The databases, the cost of, you know, the, the, the cost of, Tax collecting. Digital storage, digital transmission, and digital processing over the past 30 years has collapsed. And that's so why that's they want the global taxes. Unit in Utah where yep. they store every single email and voice. Thank you, Max. Great job.